your sake. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade and your rain. The sun will not harm you by day or the moon by night. This day to 
be one that you stand alongside of this family, of your family member. Just know that this church is standing alongside of you and anything that we can do this day and beyond. We are here for just that. Steve, before listen, we met because I think you got from your mother how to cook. Y'all laugh because you know it's true. Listen, Steve, Steve, very early on, I didn't know him. I didn't, I didn't, I, I hadn't been at Concord since a kid, but very young. And one of the first times we actually, actually interacted was because he was serving the ministry that served food on Sunday mornings. And uh, you know how when you come to church sometimes, you think, man, this food nasty. I, I, I'm not, look, I would skip a meal the night before knowing that I was going to get to Concord and have a meal. So God bless you, bro. Thank you for allowing me. And walk alongside of you this day. That was a couple years ago. I sat in the front row in the same position as an only child, uh, having to celebrate the life of a mother who I felt like God is too soon. God, how will the world be on this day and time? And I'm going to make it. I heard you in the line to say it's not that I'm sad or mad, it's that I'm lonely. It's that on a day like today, you would call, hey, what's up, mama? Just know that. The Lord hears you. Your mom loves you. The Lord loves her best. And so the time that he loaned her to you on this side, I'm thankful that it was valuable. I'm thankful that it was fit well. I'm thankful that there was no angst, there was no bitterness, there was nothing but love between you two. And I want to celebrate you all today in the way that you care for your mom. That means amen. Amen. Thank you. 
understand that you have need of it. The season is over. The chapters have ended. And I know we don't want the chapters to end, but at some point we all have an ending to the story. But I thank, her, thank God that the ending of the story is with Jesus Christ, the Savior of this world. The blood that washes away all the sin. We thank you. Now, I know it's our ministers. Wonderful Spirit of God to speak the word of God. Word of peace, reconciliation, healing. We use peace on the family, comfort, and even the restoration of children. We thank you so much for all that you've done for us, God. We turn this service over to you. Have your will and your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen.
also new free will Baptist Church in Champaign, Illinois. We'll make sure that we acknowledge that. Thank you. Amen. You will love my brother. Yes, also going to be acknowledged from Michael Smith, Luke Young, personalized Steve Academy Principal, Brittany Torres Counselor. Dr. Yusuma Rogers, Superintendent. I want to make sure that we acknowledge uh, that resolution as well. And also, one from the W. David W. Carr. Make sure I get that right. The David W. Carr. That's right. Get it right, though. Carl, I don't want to stand here. Listen. Listen, 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 listen. listen. We'll talk later, but uh, this is y'all's David.
to the family, loved ones, and friends. Uh, to my Lord Jesus, service, uh, to my Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, my name is Patrick Williams, uh, I'm a really good friend of uh, Mr. Poole and the family. Uh, someone uh, once said that it takes a village to raise a child. So a long time ago, this little small city called Oakland, Texas, in 1982, you know, the Williams told his family, the Love family, the Poole family, Taylor family, just to name a few. We used to hang out all the time, go to each other's houses, and we all knew the rules. Rule number one, you better not let anybody in my house. <laughs> Rule number two, you better have this house clean. And rule number three, you better have that homework done. All right? We knew the rules, but we did not follow. <laughs> so at each one of those households, we used to eat up all the food, tear the house up. We knew what time the parents would come home. So we used to check out, watch every once in a while, and continue to play. But two minutes before the parents came home, we used to throw stuff under the bed, clean up real quick. Run down the street, then walk up to the house and act like we were just showing up. <laughs> but it was something different about weeping to uh we didn't tell you something different. We did the same things at the pool house. But for some reason, Steve used to follow us around and I was fixed up. We go to the restroom, we go to the restroom. We go in the kitchen, we pull, we watch us, don't touch that. <laughs> we go in the little one room, but we go in here, we go in there, we follow us, we spray stuff up. But the most important thing, we check out our watches. When, when we knew this pool was coming home, we ran out the house and we waited. But for some reason, when she came in the house, she left that door open, and we heard every word. <laughs> I don't even have to go to my house. <laughs> There's a couple of words I can't say here. <laughs> I know she probably across the head. She said some choice words. She probably did take some things. And for some reason, after all that, we're here in the background. Are y'all hungry? Make sure y'all hungry. <laughs> so I said to say this. Uh, she's not gonna leave, she's not gonna uh, hold her tongue or bite her tongue for anybody. Uh, see, if you go in the house, she's gonna pop in her head, she's gonna tell you how she feels, then she's gonna offer some food and some kind words to you. That's this stuff. And uh, we're here today to celebrate this poem. And one thing I want to say is give her a hit now. She did an outstanding job with that young man. Thank you.
in the same space with the person, but you can still have a relationship. And your technology allows you to FaceTime and all that type of stuff. But I didn't know the effect that she was having on certain people. Um, she had a co-worker named Barbara. Barbara here? But Barbara had told me the story how she couldn't cook. And I was like, you know, I can't cook. <laughs> and she said, Steve, it was sometimes it was two, maybe three times a week. She would prepare dinner, dinner for me. I would get home before my husband, put it in the stove. <laughs>
personified. We thank you, Father. Now, God, I decrease, asking for increase. Lord, what we spend time doing in private, now, Lord, display publicly. We thank you, God. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. We pray and ask it all. Let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. 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 To the author and finisher of my faith, none other than Jesus, who is the Christ, who sits at the power seat, the right hand of the Father. And for the ambassador of this church, that angel of this house, Pastor Carter in his absence, and Pastor Williams, who has resided well, officiating as well as Minister Wilson, those who have spoken earlier today. But I want to take time to just say thank you for the opportunity to be here to celebrate your mother, to celebrate you, Brother Stephen, my friend, my brother, for the family who has embraced me throughout this process of getting to this point. And it doesn't stop here, we're in this thing together. Thank you so much for our humble for the opportunity to be here. If the class of 1991 or any corner graduates here, just stand briefly all over the room. Let him see your face. Amen. 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 This is such an awesome opportunity. Amen. Amen. We thank God for this time. And I want to thank God for having good people here. One of my trustees roll with me, Brother Ross Moore. Thank you for every pastor of these good men yeah. who will journey with him and just good people all around him. But there is work to do and there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Yeah. I want to bring your attention to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. I'll be reading briefly from the New Living Translation of the Word of God. You'll find these words. I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and entered into your mother Eunice. And I know that the same faith continues strong in you. For just a moment, I want to preach about the diary of a devoted mother. Amen. The diary of a devoted mother. I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, couldn't refuse it. I did not seek it. I did not choose it. But it's up for me to use it. I must suffer if I abuse it. Give a count if I lose it. Just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. These are the immortal and timeless words of one Benjamin Elijah Mays, who preached the eulogy for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And in that, the essence of it is prescribed because on the tablets of time, he tested the waters of a diary of a life of a legacy-based man. And that same empirical formula, step pool, model pool, left an indelible print on Stephen. The diary of a devoted mother. The grass withers. The flower thereof fades away. But the word of our God shall stand forever. The diary of a devoted mother. Let's not hold you too long. A diary is a place where you keep records of events, situations, experiences, and other personal things that occur in the existence of one's life. Church, one's diary is a place that you can write about whatever you like. 
with everyone. And it's free from outside judgment, unwarranted opinions, and intrusions based upon third party criticism. Uh, it is literally a diarist's intention to be the extension of your mind, safe and free. Dear family, friends, loved ones, and listeners, a diary can be whatever you decide and should be a place where you can be honest, truthful, and straightforward. And if you knew anything about Mama Stella Louise Poole, then you know that she was genuine, blunt, sincere, straightforward, and honest. It's been said and that fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. Uh, and she stood as an oak tree, rooted in Christ, real in life, and relational in her connection. Just like that, Stephen is no exception because he's frank and he's forthright. He's truthful and telling. He is straight up and he's straightforward. Am I right about it? Truth doesn't fall far from the truth. And I just believe that there's somebody in our text this morning who knows how you feel. He knows and understands the nurturing and the nature of a mother from a son's perspective. His name is Timothy. And his mama's name is Eunice. Somebody in here right now understands the nature of mother and son relationships, but there's nobody who can describe it better than the Apostle Paul. You got time? Uh, this text paralyzes the consciousness, but it parallels to the life of Eunice as well as Mama Poo. Walk with me as we explore this diary, this theoretical diary of a devoted mother. When you look at the text, the Apostle Paul, who is essentially writing this letter to his young understudy, his Emmanuelizers, Timothy, he makes two assertions in the text. There are two implications and observations in the text. He implies that Timothy's genuine faith is a belief system, church, that came through his grandmother, passed by and in his mother, and then inserted into her son, Timothy. But I said he made two assertions. Uh, there are two observations. The first one is very clear. The first one is obvious, but the next one is not. Because culturally, a young man in Timothy's spot had a father on the scene to nurture him, to guide him, to undergird him, yet Timothy's did not. The only mention of Timothy's father was in Acts chapter 16 uh, in the Bible when he says that although Eunice was a Jewish believer in Christ. He said, the father was a Greek. And the implication is that Timothy's father was not the person who cultivated Timothy. It was not him who showed him how to tie his shoes. He was not the person who was there when his voice started changing. You're not talking to me. He, he was not the person there to share with him this is what it looks like to grow from a boy through masculinity to young adulthood. No, it wasn't his daddy, it was his mom. Yeah. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, I, I just got a sneaky suspicion and a holy hunch that Stella Poole was just like you this. Uh, I'm talking about the diary of a devoted mother. When I look at the life of Mama Poole, through the lens, per se, of this theoretical diary, I can easily discern that she had, first of all, a reflective faith. A reflective faith. Here's how I know. Paul says, I remember 
in the text. That's a reflection. Whenever you can recall that, recount and reconnect those things of yesteryear, that is a reflection. Uh, Stella Poole had a reflective faith. What does, what does he remember? He remembers the tenets and the belief system, the faith of Jesus Christ that he sees reflected in young Timothy, the son, by his mother, Eunice. And just like you see that same level of faith from Eunice past to Timothy, you see the same level of faith and focus and fervor surpass from a Stella Weed pool down to Stephen pool. Yeah. There is faithfulness because the fruit and the byproduct is the process. I said the fruit and the byproduct is the process. One more time, make me feel a little bit better. The fruit is a byproduct of the process. My pool, oh, she had a reflective faith. Her life was visibly transparent. It was not only transparent, uh, brother preachers, but it was truthful. Uh, Mama Pool was devoted. She was devout. Yet she was disciplined and dedicated. She was committed, compassionate, composed, but she was caring. Uh, yes, Mother Pool is not simply a birthing babysitter, but she was a devoted mother. Because there are some people that have children, but the children never connected with the mother. So the Pool was not that kind of woman. She was the kind of woman that would whoop you, extend your card, and tell you to go pick your own switch. And yet, when you make it back in the house, she gonna love on you, feed you, so you can go to sleep. Pool, y'all not talking to me. And she is devoted. Uh, she had a reflective faith. It was reflected in her friendships, because even like Stephen said earlier, she still communicated with co-workers from Octave. Uh, she connected well with her best friend, Linda. She had a reflective faith uh, that scores of people of all ages, races, creeds, and colors would come around because she had a reflective faith that was magnetic in nature. Uh, it was reflective in her faith. But not only did she have a reflective faith, but she had a resilient faith. She was reflective, but she was resilient. Mama Poole was tough. I said she was tough. She was tough, and she didn't like it if you were weak. If you demonstrated weakness, she would tell you, don't be weak around me. You gotta be tough, because the world is tough. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. And so she had a resilient faith. Uh, you were not going to walk over a still pool. No, no, you, no, you weren't. And, and, and she spoke with her eyes. And her presence carried a lot of weight. She didn't go in demanding respect. She commanded respect. Because she didn't have to force you to do anything. It was her presence when she walked in the room. And she didn't uh, understand all of everything, but she had enough common sense and worldly understanding and the word of God in her that she had good resources. She never made him in a family setting have to want for anything because they had everything they needed. And brothers and sisters, when you get to the point that you find out that you don't have all you want, you'll find out that Jesus is all you need. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brothers and sisters, she commanded this respect. She was saved, but she would let you know what she had to say. Um, but her resilience and her strength was a key component of her character. Mama Poole, uh, she shattered the statistics because she actually raised a young man to become a master. 
masculine man and a leader. Uh, her faith did not waver because she was resilient and a devoted mother. I imagine if we turn the pages of her diary, uh, there were times when she got on the nerves. But she said, I love him so much that I'm willing to do anything I can for him to make it. And let the truth be told, it was in our eyes, in the huddle of their private homes. I imagine that there were secretive conversations that were just between mother and son, and son and mother that she instilled within him that nobody can ever snatch away. Because there are seeds of fruitfulness, because the evidence is in the process because the product has been telling that he has produced fruit from a faithful tree. Yeah. Uh, brothers and sisters, her resilience, even in sickness, was overwhelming because it was overshadowed by her faith. Her faith in Christ is what allowed her to be resilient in her faith. So she had a reflective faith. She had a Resilient faith. But then finally, brothers and sisters, she had a redemptive faith. Somebody will get it in the middle? She had a reflective faith. That's good. Uh, she had a resilient faith. But then she had a redemptive faith. Brothers and sisters, Mama Poole knew who her Savior was. She knew who her Savior is. And she knew who it was that brought her. She knew who it was that kept her. She knew who it was that made the way out of the way. And there ought to be somebody in the room that knows that he can make a way out of the way. Y'all know who I'm talking about. She lived a life Oh, 
but it is, it, 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 it's not a far cry, let me just say that. Uh, and there's a limited number of seats. So first, we want to make sure that we serve the family, okay? And immediate close friends will. If you see a seat that you can see after and only after the family and close friends have been seated, you're more than welcome to take part. That will happen in our chapel. It is out of these doors to the left and down the hallway. Again, we want to make sure that the family, okay? So if you're not family, we got an exit button that'll get you up out of that seat. Remember <laughs> the name of Jesus. Uh, uh, because I understand that the pools don't split hair. So I, I've been given free reign to say what it is, all right? So at this time, we do want to do the turn on. Now, Father God, we thank you. 
thank you for this time. You have sojourned with us. Lord, thank you for accompanying us. But Lord, right now, we remove ourselves from the appointment of this day. And we ask God that you will carry us the rest of the way. Father God, thank you for the life of Mama Poo. Thank you for her legacy. Thank you for her love that will linger. But Father God, right now, as you share through Christ and his disciples, my peace I leave with thee. My peace I give unto thee. It is in your powerful and perfect name we pray and ask it all. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Right.